Hi folks, welcome back to Stacey Can Can. Today I am making mom's apple pie in a jar, which is basically apple pie jam, minus the crust. So it won't have, it won't have the crust in it, but it's gonna be like a full on apple pie filling that you can then uh, put on a crust of some sort, like toast or uh, pancakes hoo, 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 or waffles, yum. And also you can make some um, fruit tarts with it. You can get some uh, phyllo dough, a puff pastry, and uh, add, add some of this into it and it'll be delicious. So while I go over all the information, please uh, follow along down below in the show notes. And while you're down there, please hit like and subscribe because that does help. So the ingredients that you need are um, uh, three fourths of a cup of raisins or cranberries. I'm using cranberries. It's, it's up to you. I just, I like the punch of a cranberry a little bit better than a raisin. And we just eat more cranberries and raisins anyway. So I have them available. Um, six cups of uh, chopped cord and peeled Granny Smith apple or a tart apple. You, you do want, you don't want, um, you don't want, you want more of a baking apple, something that's a little um, sturdier, hardier and not something soft that you would use to make um, applesauce. So just like a good tart pie apple, essentially. Uh, and then a one lemon that is, um, we're gonna grate the zest and juice it. Uh, six, I don't have it in here, <laughs> but six tablespoons of pectin. I will pull that out in a second. Pectin, either ball or you can use the, um, oh, Bernardin, I think is, I'm reading it here. Bernardin, I believe, original pectin. I think that's how you say it. Don't quote me on it. Um, a, a package of that. Uh, hold on to your horses. Nine cups of sugar. I know. <laughs> but jams and jellies have a lot of sugar in them. And you don't use a ton. But yes, it's, it's going to have a lot of sugar in it. Um, a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon and then a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And both of those are ground. So the tools that you need. We definitely uh, will need our um, our funnel, our ladle, our jar lifter, headspace tool, or, uh, headspace tool, um, the chopstick because we are uh, bubbling, and then the um, this guy here is called a lid lifter. Words are hard. <laughs> um, other tools that you can use if you want. Um, I this is the zester I'm using. If you have a different zester, use that. I'm using you know a vegetable peeler for pouring. I have a. a uh, tool to juice. Some of these you can just use with a knife and squeeze the juice with your hands, whatever. And then I do have this little apple core thing that I'm going to use because it makes my life easier after peeling. And I like have the tool, so I'm going to use it. Uh, you need some measuring cups and spoons. We've got um, a canner here. This makes about around six half pints or six eight ounce jars of, of uh, uh, eight ounce jars. And um, a stock pot, I do have a, a, another smaller pot here that I'm gonna use to heat the lids with. Um, you can use a bowl if you want, just kinda, I like to heat the lids um, when I'm water bath canning, just to get the, uh, get the film off. Get that um, film off the, like the manufacturing the kind of oil or film off the, the lid. That's just me. You don't technically need to heat the lids, but. so. That's what I'm doing. Oh, did, I think I missed something here. <laughs> oh, and we also do need, you do need a couple of apple juice and I missed that on the recipe. You need a couple of apple juice, unsweetened apple juice as well. So with all that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure out all the dry ingredients. I like doing that before, especially peeling apples and such because they turn brown so quickly. So I kind of like to get everything ready prior to peeling and uh, pouring the apples. So let's get started. I'm gonna just zest this lemon right into the pot that I'm gonna use to make the jam. I'm not adding, um, I'm not adding any like extra bowl or something like that. So there are a few little spots on, on this lemon that I'm just gonna kind of go around. I'm gonna cut the lemon in half. don't have a juicer, you can just squeeze it with your hand. Just make sure you don't get any um, seeds in it. And I'm using my little apple core here. Just kind of get down here and shove it in there really well. 
another quick thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the apple juice to the lemon juice as well prior to putting the apples in. This will uh, help keep the apples from turning brown. All right, so I'm getting, I've got the uh, 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 six cups of chopped apples and seeded and cored and peeled, etc. And then the um, apple juice, a cup of apple juice and the peeled lemon and zested lemon. Not peeled, but zested and squeezed lemon. And I turn the heat up to high, I've stirred the apples so that they're coated so they don't turn brown. And I've got the heat turned up to high and we're gonna bring this to a boil. And uh, when it comes to a boil, we'll set a timer. So I have a boil going and I've set a timer for 10 minutes. I've also reduced the heat to about a medium, medium high. We're gonna boil this gently for about 10 minutes just to get the uh, apple softened. And you just, you wanna stir occasionally. You don't need to continuously stir, but uh, give it a stir a few times. So I've got the apples. They're they're nice and soft. I'm, it actually only took about four minutes to soften these up, so just keep that in mind as you're going. Here's a great tip when it comes to pectin. So I've measured out all the pectin, and then you want to take a fourth of a cup from your pre-measured sugar. From the pre-measured, don't measure out more sugar. Just measure out your sugar and then add a fourth of a cup to the pectin. And I like to, you can use a whisk, but I like to use a fork and just stir it all in really well, like so. The reason why you wanna do this is it, is it helps keep the pectin from clumping. And it does a really good job with that too. It, it truly, truly works. And uh, I, I think the fork does a good job of just sort of stirring things, stirring things around. Now you can sprinkle it in to the to the apples here. We're gonna give this a good stir. We're stirring this until dissolved, which is basically about now. And then we're stirring in the raisins or craisins, whatever, whatever you're choosing to use. Like I said, I'm using craisins today. It's like a, a tart craisin. And now we're gonna kick the heat up again and we're gonna bring this to a boil. And you wanna stir this frequently. Now we're gonna dump in, we've got a rolling boil going and we're dumping in all the sugar at once and look at how painful that is. Sorry. I'm gonna get this good and stirred and we're gonna bring this up to a boil as well. You wanna stir this continuously. I've got a rolling boil going now that I cannot stir away so I've set a timer for one minute. This is where you really wanna boil this hard. All right, it, that one minute timer has gone off, so I'm cutting the heat. And then I'm adding the uh, nutmeg, or this is the cinnamon, the teaspoon of cinnamon, and the half teaspoon of nutmeg. You can use this without the uh, cinnamon and nutmeg if you want. Those spices are, they are optional. So I have my jars heating up in the canner here, and I'm very carefully taking those out and uh, adding my funnel here. And we are filling the jars to a quarter of an inch headspace. And I am bubbling just a little bit. This is pretty runny and hot, so I am just kind of giving it a spin around. I normally don't because um, with jams and jellies, but this one's pretty, pretty loose. Um, not loose, but thin, I should say. So, and uh, I've got it up to a quarter of an inch headspace. I'm using the lid water and um, with a paper towel here and just cleaning the rim. Very good, it's very sticky. And then using the lid lifter. Just remember, it's just a fingertip tight. It's super hot, so be careful. Fingertip tight. And uh, now we lift it into the canner. And remember, do not tip or tilt. Just carry over, because you don't want to get food stuffs in between the lid and the jar. Got all the jars in the canner now. So let's take the heat up to high and covering it when it comes to a rolling boil, I'll set the timer. 
I've got a rolling boil going with also an inch of water over the top of the jars, just as a friendly reminder, you gotta make sure those jars are covered properly. Um, so I've got a rolling boil going and I set the timer for 10 minutes for my altitude. For more altitude information in your area, you can check over on the side here or down below in the show notes. 10 minute timer has gone off for my altitude. I'm cutting the heat and then I'm very carefully lifting the lid away from my face. Watch it. That'll give you, look at that steam. That'll give you a facial you do not want. And I'm going to set another timer for five minutes. This is going to give the jars and the food in the jars an opportunity to settle and it helps with the sealing process before pulling them out of the canker. Five minute timer has gone off to let the jar, the food in the jar settle. So we're going to go ahead and Love hearing that little pop. Got another seal. And remember, when you're removing the jar, you don't want to tip or tip, tilt the jars. You want to just uh, lift them up and over. Um, the contents in the jars are still hot, so it can easily, you can easily get some food stuck in between the lid and the, the rim of the jar. And then it won't, and then it won't seal. There's another, there's another seal. These are just pop, pop, popping. And this is Mom's apple pie in a jar. And oh my heart, is it good? <laughs> it's really good. It actually made a lot. I was kind of wondering when it said six, about six eight ounce jars. Um, I, I, I'm just not surprised. I ended up filling up another full pint. So this actually made seven, this would have made some eight, nine, nine um, half pints. So just keep that in mind. I don't know if I just added too many, too many um, apples or what. I will say the apples broke down a little bit more than I was expecting them to. Um, I don't know, that's something that can happen. So it just, you know, the water content and the quality of the apples, etc. Um, plus it is winter, so it's winter. works but it's still it's still an easy thing to do and boy is it delicious most of the jars have already sealed as well but you still need to give them a good 12 to 24 hours to completely cool before taking the rings off and as mentioned even when the um, rings are a little loose don't tighten them at this point you just let them be so keep that in mind when you are when you are as they're cooling for you um, that's how you do it this would be as mentioned early at the beginning of the video, this would be really great, um, uh, gosh, over pancakes and waffles and uh, ooh, cake filling. Filler would be, it would be fantastic cake filler. Uh, uh, oh my goodness, it would be very good. And also it would be uh, great with puff pastry. Um, you can make a bit of a glaze with this by adding um, a little of the apple juice to kind of thin it out a little bit as it sets up. And you can put that over over um, pork or ham or, or chicken and uh, marinate it as such, and it will put a little bit that nice kind of like fall flavor for it. Fantastic flavors in there. It's really, really, really good. So good. Um, so it's got it's pretty versatile. It's pretty versatile there. Mixed in with yogurt. Just, ugh, a lot of uses. A lot of uses. So that's how we do it. Now the recipe for all of this is down below in the show notes. While you're down there, please hit like and subscribe if that does help. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feedback from you as well, please reach out to me. I'm on Facebook at Stacey Can Can. You can at me on Instagram and TikTok at Stacey Can Can. My website is www.stacycancan.com. My email is info at stacycancan.com. And my I'm on LinkedIn at stacycancan.com. So if you have any, again, if you have any questions, reach out.